Around the mid-900s, the Byzantine Empire was in a state of political turmoil. A Byzantine general named Bardas Kleros started a rebellion against the Byzantine Emperor Basil II and allied himself with the local Hamdanid and Armenian rulers. This allowed others in the region to take advantage of the unstable situation and expand their domains. One of them was a Kurdish man named Baz. Baz was most likely born in a village called Kormaz, which lies between the mountains of Khizan and Sirt, southwest of the Wan Lake. Unfortunately, not much is known about his personal life. As an adult, Baz was originally the leader of a small group of armed men. He supposedly inherited his father's domains, which was a Kurdish tribal federation centered around the towns of Sirt and Betlis that acted as a vessel to the Hamdanid. During the rebellion of Bardas Kleros in the year 978, Baz raided the poorly defended region of Taron and sacked the town of Mush, which had no walls to defend itself at that time. Shortly after, he expanded his domains to the northern shores of the Wan Lake. The first town he took was Ardish, and later went on to take Malasgirt and Khilad. The reason for this northwards expansion was most likely related to the belief among Muslims at that time to spread their religion into Christian-dominated lands. During roughly the same period, the Puyid ruler in Baghdad, Adud ad dawla was advancing his forces northwards into Hamdanid territory. He first took control of Mosul and its surroundings. Later, after three months of siege, he also successfully took Maya Farkin and Amit. This would remain so until the year 983. At first, Baz decided to pay homage to Adud ad dawla and made his way to Mosul. The relation between Baz and Adud ad dawla was strained to his recent military activities around the Wan Lake. Adud ad dawla was known for his harsh measures against banditry and marauding. Shortly after his arrival, Baz was overcome by fear that Adud ad dawla would not spare him and decided to escape the city. Adud ad dawla sent agents to arrest Baz, but with no success. Baz returned safely to his domains. This failed meeting paved the way for Baz to become an independent power. Following this failed meeting, the Buyids negotiated a peace treaty with the Byzantines and Baz's territory became a subject of the treaty signed between them. Baz paid taxes to the Byzantines and asked the Buyids to not protect him from them. This mutual understanding brought a short period of relative stability to the region. The sudden death of Adud ad dawla in March 983 caused a period of political turmoil in the Buyid dynasty. This gave Baz another opportunity to expand his domains. He advanced his forces westwards into the lands of Diyarbakir, whom were captured from the Hamdanids by the Buyids a few years earlier. The Buyids were not popular in the region, and the people invited Baz to drive them out. Baz first took the towns of Gherzan, Haskiv, and also Maya Farkin, whose inhabitants welcomed him by opening their gates. Shortly after, he was also able to take Ahmed and its surroundings. Baz was able to take these towns fairly easily thanks to the existence of a Muslim population and their previous possession of this area. Baz continued his advance into Buya territory. In the early months of 984, he marched his forces southwards towards the town of Nisebin. Here, the news of Adud ad dawlas death caused the inhabitants to revolt against their supposedly tyrannical Buyid governor. He tried to escape in woman's clothing, but was captured and killed. The revolt was led by a Kurd, and he quickly handed over the town to Baz out of fear for another Buyid governor. Baz continued his advance and captured the town of Jazira and reached the outskirts of Mosul a few days later. Despite being in a state of infighting and political turmoil, the Buyids were able to send forces led by Bahram ibn Ardashir to counter Baz's advances towards Mosul. However, the Buyid governor of Mosul, Abu Mutarraf, sympathized with Baz because he had often aided him militarily against the incursions of other Kurdish groups. Therefore, Abu Mutarraf decided not to move against Baz and withdrew his forces from Bahram. Shortly after, perhaps because of the absence of Abu Mutaro's forces, Baz managed to defeat Bahram in a battle at the outskirts of Mosul. Later in the year 984, the successor son of Adud ad dawla Sumsam ad dawla acquired new troops led by Qasim Sa'ad ibn Muhammad and Ziyad ibn Shahra Kuya, whom recently returned from an expedition in the east. A new force commanded by Qasim Sa'ad was created to counter Baz's advances towards Mosul. 
When Qasim arrived in Mosul, he initially arrested the governor Abu Mutarov, probably out of sympathy for Bas. Then he marched his forces northwards and encountered Bas's forces at the castle of Erdumusht. A fierce fight happened in which Bas claimed victory once more. He took many prisoners and advanced even further into Buyid territory. Qasim managed to escape the battle, but Bas pursued him all the way to Mosul itself. Back in Mosul, after hearing about the outcome of the battle, the inhabitants revolted against the Buyid authorities and Qasim had to flee to nearby Tikrit as a result. The two victories and the revolt among the population of Mosul enabled Bas to take control of the city. Bas released the former Buyid governor Abu Mutarov and appointed him as vizier to rule in his name. He also issued coins in his name in order to consolidate and provide legitimacy to his rule. Still in the same year, word spread fast about Bas's victory. Rumors were spread that Bas was planning to also attack the Buyids in their capital, Baghdad. Some Samad Dola was distraught. His only hope to recapture his lost territories was his other military officer, Ziyar ibn Shahrakuya. Some Samad Dola provided Ziyar Turkish mercenaries and sent him once again to retake Mosul. On the way to Mosul, Ziyar's army was also joined by Qasim, whom previously fled to Takrit. This time, the combined Buyid forces managed to defeat Bas in August 984, capturing and imprisoning many of his forces and relatives. While Ziyar went on to retake Mosul itself, Qasim's forces marched further north, chasing the narrowly escaped Bas and the remainder of his forces. Qasim split his forces into two directions. One went to retake Nisabin, and the other went to recapture Dizire. Despite their victory at Mosul, there was unhappiness among the Buyid forces and they lacked the capabilities to continue the fight against Bas. To solve this, Sum Samad Dola made contact with the Hamdanid Emir of Aleppo, Sa'ad ad Dola, and promised the lands of Diyar Bakr as a thief and encouraged him to attack Bas before he could consolidate his control there again. Sa'ad ad Dola agreed and made an attempt to attack Bas at Maya Farkhin, but was unsuccessful. Bas consolidated his control again and stayed at Til Fafan. Qasim realized that Bas and his forces could not be defeated militarily. Therefore, he planned to assassinate Bas. During the night, an assassin managed to sneak into Bas' encampment and enter his tent. But instead of hitting a proper blow to the head, the assassin hit Bas's leg and fled out of panic. Thus, Bas survived the assassination with treatable wounds. Meanwhile, on his own initiative, Ziyar met with Bas in secret and offered him an end to the fighting. They agreed. In Nisabin, where Qasim was stationed, they signed the peace treaty of Nisabin in, in 985. In this treaty, it was agreed that Bas was allowed to retain the areas of Diyar Bakr and the western part of Tur Abdi. While Nisabin and Jazira returned to Buyid rule, Bas now became a vassal of the Buyids. He assumed corresponding duties and his domains were properly defined. In the years 986 and 987, the elder brother of Sumsam ad dawla Sharaf ad dawla became the new ruler of the Buyid dynasty. He undermined the patronage network of his younger brother, such as removing Qasim as governor in Mosul and replacing him with one of his followers named Khashaze. This and other similar actions of Sharaf ad dawla created another period of political instability in the Buyid dynasty, from which Bas again made proper use. At first, in order to maintain peace, the Buyids made plans to grant Bas additional areas to his domains, such as the eastern part of Tur Abdin and Jazira. The plan failed, as this decision was reversed by Sharaf ad dawla which led Bas to break his vassalage and march his forces into the eastern Buyid controlled part of Tur Abdin. Khashaze initially wanted to confront Bas by marching his forces to Nusaybin. However, the Buyid court in Baghdad was not able to provide sufficient forces and money for him to put up a proper defense against Bas. Moreover, he had no secure flanks in Mosul either, as the inhabitants of the city revolted once again against their Buyid overlords, resulting in a big bloodbath and his position in the city becoming very unstable. In order to solve this, Khashaze appealed to the Arab Uqail tribe, who lived in the Syrian deserts. He granted them the land south of Tur Abdin, convinced that they would be easier to control than Bas. In this region, the Arabs and their fast horses had an advantage over the Kurds, and they were instructed to prevent any further advances of Bas to the south. For some months, a series of confrontations happened between Bas and the Uqail Arabs, where in one incident, Bas's brother was killed. 
which greatly weakened the Kurdish leader. In 989, the Buyid ruler Sharaf Adola suddenly died and Kharshaza retreated his forces back to Mosul, which enabled Baas to take complete control over the region of Tur Abdin. He installed Kurdish rulers in the towns and mountains, but they were not able to extend their hegemony to the southern Jazeera, which was now firmly under the control of Arab tribes. During the Buyid takeover of Mosul from the Hamdanids, the brothers of the Hamdanid Emir Abu Tahlib named Abu Abdullah al Hussein and Tahir Ibrahim had defected to the Buyids and stayed at the Buyid court in Baghdad. When Baha Daula took power as the new Buyid ruler in 990, he carelessly allowed the two brothers to travel to Mosul, probably in the hope to install them as bastions against possible southern incursions of Baas like the other Arab tribal leaders in the area. However, after a short period, Baha Daula started to see the two Hamdanid brothers in Mosul as a threat. Therefore, he ordered the governor of the city, Khashaze, to send them back to Baghdad. The ousting of the two brothers caused the population of Mosul to revolt once again. They looted the quarters of the Buyid and Turkish garrison forces and killed many of them. Only a few managed to survive by hiding in the mosques. Khashaze was also forced to hide in his governor's residence. The Hamdanid brothers later intervened and suited the situation by allowing Khashaze and the remainder of his forces to return to Baghdad. Thus, Mosul came under the control of the Hamdanids again. When Baz was informed about the Hamdanid takeover in Mosul, he thought that he could take over the city in the same manner. After all, through his previous assistance to the city, he believed that the population already favored him. He started to contact the residents, and some of them indeed welcomed this takeover of the city. With roughly 6,000 Kurdish riders, among them the Bashnawi tribe, Baas marched from Tur Abdin to Mosul through the eastern banks of the Tigris River. The Hamdanid brothers in Mosul were not able to defeat this force on their own. Therefore, they asked Abu Zawad Muhammad ibn Musaib, the leader of the Arab Uqail tribe, for assistance. They accepted the request, and in turn, they demanded the dominion of Jazeera, Nisabin, Balad, and the surrounding areas, which was accepted. Tahir took command of Mosul city itself, while Abdullah took the leadership of 2,000 Arab Uqail horsemen and crossed the Tigris River to its east bank near the town of Balad. As Baas marched south close to the eastern banks of the Tigris River, he encountered the Hamdanid forces from Mosul led by Abdullah. While initiating the battle, Baz became aware about the 2,000 strong Uqail horsemen approaching him from behind. Fear struck him that the Hamdanids and their Uqail allies would now be able to encircle his forces. He vaguely ordered his forces to retreat to the nearby mountains, where they would have an advantage. However, this order confused his forces, as their retreat became very chaotic and as a result enabled the Uqail Arabs to successfully carry out their surprise attack. While trying to flee, Baz was unable to change horses and fell onto the ground. He broke his collarbone and was not able to ride his horse anymore. His family and followers had no choice but to leave him behind. Having lost their leader in a chaotic retreat, most of Baz's forces and his family still managed to reach the safety of the mountains and marched through the foothills back to Meyafarki. Thank you.